Hi, this is Ellis, and this is day 39 of 40 Days and 40 Plants. Today's plant is this Tritiscantia silamontana, also called a white velvet, and it's also known by different names as well, and I'll explain much more about it later on in the video. Let's begin with today's collect. Almighty God, we pray you graciously to behold this your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed and given into the hands of sinners and to suffer death upon the cross, who now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. So today is Good Friday, and of course we are following uh, the Passion of Jesus Christ, um, and we remember this story especially today. Um, you know, our readings are really focused on that. In the um, Gospel reading, we have the entire telling of the Gospel of the Passion, uh, according to John. The reading that I wanted to focus on today, though, is the one from the Old Testament. It's uh, from Isaiah, and it basically talks a little bit more about who Jesus is and kind of the whole circumstance of Jesus as well. This is Isaiah chapter 52, verse 13, through chapter 53, verse 12. See, my servant shall prosper, he shall be exalted and lifted up, and shall be very high. Just as there were many who were astonished at him, so marred was his appearance beyond human semblance, and from it, and his form beyond that of mortals. So he shall startle many nations, kings shall shut their mouths because of him, for that which had not been told them they shall see and that which they had not heard, they shall contemplate. Who has believed what we have heard? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant, and like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by others, a man of suffering and acquainted with infirmity, and as one from whom others hide their face, he was despised, and we held to him of no account. Surely he has borne our infirmities and carried our diseases. Yet we accounted him stricken, struck down by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole, and by his bruises we are healed. All we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have all turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed, and he was afflicted, yet did not open his mouth, like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that before its shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By a perversion of justice he was taken away. Who could have imagined his future? For he was cut off from the land of the living, stricken for the transgressions of my people. They made his grave with the wicked, and his tomb with the rich, although he had done no violence, and there was no deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him with pain. When you make his life an offering for sin, he shall see his offspring, and shall prolong his days. Through him the will of the Lord shall prosper. Out of his anguish he shall see light, he shall find satisfaction through his knowledge. The righteous one, my servant, shall make many righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore I will allot him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out himself to death, and was numbered with the transgressors. Yet he bore the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. So, of course, in that reading, we understand a little bit more about what Jesus represents and kind of what uh, circumstances Jesus came into this world and especially under what circumstances he had to be crucified. And that brings me to today's plant. So, um, I'm maybe a little bit embarrassed to kind of show this plant because it has had much better days um, before, but... Uh, there is a little bit of a story that I wanted to bring up with it, and I'll definitely explain that uh, once we take a closer look at this plant. So again, this is called the Tritiscantia 
uh, Salmontana, um, and it's also known as a white velvet plant, also known as spiderwort, and it has another name that I'll explain later on as well. So as I said, this plant has had much better days, and as a result, there isn't too much to show for it right now. The main thing that I wanted to show, though, is that there's all this, it's, it's a very hairy plant. It has these leaves, and then on each of the leaves, they have all of this hair on them, basically. It's a very interesting plant, and it usually grows in clumps. And as you can probably see here, um, there's a little bit more that's growing all around. So um, there's much hope for this plant, um, despite the fact that it's in a very rough condition. And this is actually a lot better than it was, um, say, a few weeks ago, even. So I brought this plant in for two specific reasons. Um, when I first got this plant, um, first of all, I just saw it at the store and I thought it was really pretty, so I decided to get it. And I potted it into this pot and I just kind of let it go. And it actually bloomed very beautifully and it just, it, it was just an amazing plant to see. Unfortunately, over the winter, for various reasons, one of them is uh, my overwintering process and I think um, I had actually put it outside a little bit too early for it to um, enjoy and also probably because of the watering as well. Um, it died back an awful lot but as I've shown already it's starting to kind of come back in different spots and so the reason why I brought this in though um, one of them was actually because of the common name which I really do not like and it gets really annoying that people keep on using this name but a lot of these plants in this um, in this family are called the Wandering Jew, um, which is, if I'm not mistaken, it's named after a um, a really bad anti-Semitic um, legend that says that there was um, a Jew who could not be forgiven uh, for some kind of sin, and so he wanders the earth and never dies because he can't be permitted to die. And so I don't think that's a really pretty name to give, first of all, to a plant, and let alone to actually um, keep on telling the same story over and over again. It makes a certain group of people look very evil or very wicked or unforgivable, and that's really not what we want. And unfortunately, even in today's gospel, we have um, there's a lot of blaming on the Jews specifically, while um, the other gospel accounts don't usually um, don't really bring that up either. So it's it's just you know it, it's a very icky bit of of historical baggage that we have and I hope that we can continue to just distance ourselves more and more for it because it doesn't help anybody. Um, so that's one thing. This, you know, this plant has a really ugly name and despite that it, it blooms really beautifully and it, it just grows up and this one specifically it has purple and green. It, it has all these pretty colors on it. The other reason why I brought it though um, was uh, because of what I wanted to focus on today as well. Um, because it is Good Friday, we, of course, focus on the fact that Jesus died. We talk about the death of Jesus. But the really important thing is the fact that we don't dwell on just the death either. And this plant has really given me some hope uh, when it comes to this idea of what death means. Um, like I said, this plant has kind of died back a little bit. And so when plants die back, it looks really ugly uh, because a lot of times you'll see an empty pot with just dirt in it. Or you'll just see an empty spot in the ground if, if it's a you know, planted in the ground, but there is still some hope. Um, you know, a lot of these plants, when they die back, they'll come back, um, usually from the same spot that they, that they kind of died from even. And so this plant, like I said, is also starting to come back to life. And it's something really um, fortunate that I'm able to look forward to. And um, just like that, I hope that um, during this, um, you know, these last few days of Lent, um, that we can make sure that we don't only dwell on the death that's in our life or that we dwell on all of the negativity in our life, but instead remember that even in the darkest of times, there's still hope for us to have. And so I wanted to end with these verses again. So this is from Isaiah chapter 53, verses 1 and 2. Who has believed what we have heard, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant, and like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. So just as we've received our salvation from Jesus, someone who is rejected and despised by countless generations of people and just, um, you know, rejected by uh, the people that were around him as well, um, I hope that we can also remember that there is always hope in these situations, 
And just as this plant has also shown me that there is also hope for it, I hope that we can really find that hope during this weekend.